The fall itself uh, came after I had left to go to Bangkok to cover all the Vietnamese who were fleeing, because I did have some knowledge of Thai, and my wife spoke fluent Thai, and I thought we could be helpful there. But in the, in the weeks before the war ended, we were trying to take all these orphans, Vietnamese orphans, out of the country, which was kind of the height of arrogance on our part. Somehow we thought we could save them from a barbaric regime by bringing them to see the virtues of democracy. And these kids were eight months old, a year old, and kind of nonsense that we all fell for. And we did it. And uh, I was trying to get on this plane trying to get to the plane to film the orphans being sent abroad, sent abroad. And uh, the kids were crying, the plane was warming up. Finally, I said to the crew chief, I said, how do you get this plane off the ground? It was a C-5A, huge plane. He said, we pray a lot. So we get off the plane, I said to the cameraman, you better shoot the takeoff. He said, oh, we shoot takeoffs all the time, they never use it. I said, look, Shoot it so we can say we've got it. And the plane took off, and uh, I said, there's something wrong with that plane. The plane's taking the whole runway. It should be off the ground at 7,500 feet. Here it was at 10,000, barely getting off the ground. I didn't know that my wife had volunteered to be a chaperone on that plane. And she had one foot out the door in Hong Kong to fly to Saigon to join the chaperones when they called her off where she would have been on the plane. All the chaperones were killed. Um, and I covered that story. It crashed right there? No. The pilot was brave enough to have the, the ailerons collapsed on him. The plane was, it's a long story, but the, but the fact of the matter is they were looking for a C-5A, looking for a big cargo plane mm -hmm. to bring these orphans out. And Lockheed was having trouble with this plane, and they figured themselves, well, you know, if we only get some humanitarian support for our effort, we'll get more money to fix the problems in the plane. So they sent the C-5A, which was a turkey of an aircraft, out to Saigon. And... Uh, so where did it crash? The pilot was really shrewd. He circled the air currents because they couldn't get the... The ailerons snapped and the front, back doors were open and the kids were losing this, losing oxygen. But he flew the plane in circular patterns around and beyond Saigon, looking for a place to land, because he knew that if he landed right in the middle of Saigon, there'd be a lot of people killed. So he finally found a place outside the city, and he brought the plane in. But it hit a dike, and then bounced a couple of times, and then crashed and broke a number of pieces. And there were about... Uh, Two to three hundred people on the plane, about half of them were killed. In, and when it happened, I was in the office doing a narration about the takeoff of everything. Mm -hmm. And all the Vietnamese were yelling, plane crash, plane crash, plane crash. And I said, C5A, C5, yes, C5A. So we sneaked out to get past NBC and CBS. They didn't have this information yet. And we got it. We got into a plane to a, our cars, and I said, let's head for the outskirts of the city. Because if we see smoke, we'll know that's where the plane was, which we did. We headed out there, and the uh, car got a flat tire, so we had to hitchhike. We hitchhiked with some Vietnamese on mopeds, little mopeds. We drove through a village that was occupied by the Viet Cong, and they were shooting at us. We finally got through there and got up to the area where the site where the plane was. And it was just carnage. It was a, but, the, but the bodies had all been removed. By the time we got there, and the crash was the site was smoking, wreckage. We got all this film. We were the first ones to get anything out of it. And finally, I knew that CBS knew I was out there at the crash site. So they knew that I knew it was a five o'clock or a six o'clock plane going from Saigon to Hong Kong. So we had to ship the film to transmit it. So I said, we got to get to Hong Kong somehow. We got to get to Saigon somehow. And. Uh, I paid a Vietnamese Air Force pilot 10,000 piastres. I just got a whole bunch of money. I just waited there. And he came down and got us. I got on the helicopter. And I sat next to a headless body. Mm. And uh, we flew into Saigon, Hong Kong Airport. 
and I got out, and the cam other cameramen were there waiting for me to do a narration. I got back to Townsend to do the narration, mm -hmm. and I was covered with blood and mud and everything else. And I broke down two or three times. I just started crying. I just couldn't control it. I finally got it in, and we were the only ones who got it on the air that night.